Right, courier just delivered this. Let's get it unboxed. Hello, I'm Ian and I play with drones and it's my favourite kind of day today. Uh, setting up, unboxing and uh, setting up a brand new model. Now I said the other day I was getting the new DJI FPV combo. It's going to be a completely different kettle of fish for me flying. I'm not an FPV flyer. Um, I'm not the sort of person that likes to get a soldering iron out and build uh, drones from scratch. Absolutely fair play to those of you that, uh, that do do that. More patience and uh, time than I've got. So that's why I kind of think that uh, I'm probably the target market for DJI with this new drone. Somebody who's uh, pretty happy uh, flying the Mavics and the like, very happy with the video and pictures that you get from it, but just wants a little bit more excitement in the actual flying side of things. So I've gone for the combo. I've also bought the uh, motion controller, which I'll be opening up as well. Uh, yeah, let's get it unboxed and uh, set up. Right, there is the beast. That's a heavy little bit of kit. It's got the drone itself. Those goggles. Have the usual various uh, cables and attachments. So we've got the new style remote control. So, uh, as we saw on the promo videos, um, the remote, very different to the uh, traditional DJI um, remotes. This is a beast. He looks like an alien, doesn't he, really? But, um, yeah, that is his angle. So he kind of is designed to be flying like that, I'm guessing. Guessing that's the battery for the goggles. One set of non-folding uh, tri-blade props. See, they've always coped with just two. Now we've got three. Headband. And various cables and the like. Just to complete the alien look. So there you go. Uh, with the combo, you get the drone, uh, the new style remote, the full set of uh, V2 goggles. You get the battery for the goggles as well. You get the set of props and a spare set of props and a few different cables so that you can connect um, your phone to the goggles as well. So a friend can have a look and also you need to do that to, uh, to set it up. Separately, you get the motion controller. That has to be ordered separately, which I did because I thought it looked like quite a bit of fun. There we go. This is actually what I'm really excited about. I think this is going to be a completely different way of, uh, of flying. And uh, the whole idea is that you can actually move, speed up, all by, uh, by moving. And, uh, and squeezing the trigger, so to speak. Um, this is gonna be, hopefully, a real bit of fun. What do you reckon? Completes the alien look, I guess. Anyway, yeah, we'll see. Right, so first things first, gotta charge up the battery. So squeezing those in, you've got to unplug it first, of course. Yep, so you unplug that. Squeezing in, and then it slides out. Now that, that is a meaty, meaty battery. Um, so I've got the, uh, <laughs> just for a bit of fun, Mavic 2 Pro here. Uh, Weight-wise, actually pretty similar with the battery. Mavic 2 Pro, 907 grams. 
The new FPV is a smidge under 800 grams. So uh, weight wise, these two beasts are roughly the same. Obviously when they're folded out, uh, two Pro is a much bigger beast, but um, yeah, weight wise, we're not talking much difference. So Mavic 2 Pro battery and the new FPV battery. So not, not too much in it, to be honest. Okay, so you've got the uh, main drone body battery charging and the uh, goggles battery charging. And I guess I'm also going to need to double check. Yeah, okay. Right, a little bit stingy. You only get one USB C charging cable, but you've got two things to charge up. Luckily, I have a spare one. Plug that into there. So whilst everything's charging, let's just quickly go through exactly what you get with the combo model. So you get the drone itself, you get the goggles, and you get the standard remote control. You get the battery to power the goggles. You only get one flight battery. So that is a change for most combos where you normally get um, a couple of extra batteries in a charging hub that is actually sold separately for quite a bit more in this case the combo means you're getting the goggles and the remote control because you can buy the drone by itself in fact for once DJI you have selling everything independently uh, of each other if, if you want that when you get the packs of uh, rotors you actually get four a's and four b's so you do actually have to open both boxes and you will see the A's have got a little red ring and you will put those on the corners with the little red markers and the B's are without the little red ring and so you will put them on like that. So to fit them you're going to hold the rotor and you're going to slot it down and you're going to push there and then turn and it's locked in place so the red ones do up like you were doing uh, the top of a jam jar so the black ones are going to go the opposite direction so when you screw push in these ones <coughs> turn the opposite direction <coughs> so likewise over here there we go, they're locked. So the black ones press and go that way, red ones press and go that way. <clears throat> and you're going to take off a little gimbal protector. So, like I said, this has got a single axis gimbal. You can only just go up and down, and uh, the rest of the stabilization is taken care of electronically. Just trying to peel off the little sticker. So what are my thoughts about its build? Well, I mean, as you would expect, the arms are mighty strong. I mean, I'm trying to flex them. Now, certainly the legs have got a slight little bit of twist in them, but the arms themselves, you can feel these are very, very solid arms. How will this cope if it smashes into a tree? Um, not very well, I reckon. So um, even though it's designed for FPV flying, I think we can be under no illusions here. If you crash this, it's going to uh, be expensive. So um, yeah, it's gonna be very interesting to see how we, uh, we get on. Um, you've got the downward vision sensors and you've also got the forward obstacle avoidance sensors. Um, Forward, uh, the forward obstacle avoidance sensors though, they only work in N mode, normal mode. So that's when you're going to be flying in the uh, most basic mode. Max speed is 35 miles an hour. Once you put it into sports mode, that takes up to 60 miles an hour and you've no longer got the obstacle avoidance. So to be honest, it's going to be of limited value um, anyway. So yeah, the bottom line is um, don't be pushing your luck, I don't think, because um, it'll be a pricey and short love affair with your FPV. Right, have a quick look at the goggles. So like I said, this is where a lot of the price uh, comes from, £525 or $570 because they've got two two inch uh, little high resolution screens, uh, 810p resolution. Um, 
and uh, yeah very low latency these are a serious little bit of kit so like I said remember with this uh, setup you're only going to be using your phone to set it up in the first place when you're flying with the uh, drone on a day-to-day -day basis uh, you won't be using your phone you've got the record you've got a backup button and you have a five-way you've got a four-way and a press uh, select button so it's this little button that you're going to be using to select through and navigate through the menu structure uh, of the settings and everything that you would normally see on your phone when you were flying um, a normal Mavic say for instance you're going to see inside the goggles now if you've got a spotter along which legally in the UK you do need to have a, a spotter alongside you because you've got to be able to maintain visual line of sight and they don't classify um, looking through an FPV a first person view system as a visual line of sight so alongside you're going to have a spotter the spotter can also keep up with what you're doing because you get the ability as it here to plug in a USB-C and you can then actually uh, link that to the phone so your spotter can hold the phone and see exactly what you're seeing at the same time so again when you're kind of ready slid it on and you can sport that sexy FPV look like I said, uh, the standard remote now, very different to what we've just got used to with the Air and the Mini 2, the Air 2 rather than the Mini 2, and certainly very different from the old Mavics. Um, these are very much where all the buttons are on the back, because obviously you're not going to be looking at the remote when you're flying, because you've got the goggles on. So the idea is that you've only got power button, you've got one function button there. You have the, uh, obviously the sticks, which um, normally do center correct themselves again but you can uh, peel off the back and using the tiny little micro allen tool allen key uh, that you get you can adjust how the sticks behave and you can remove uh, the uh, the center spring I won't be doing that uh, because because I don't want to basically quite happy with uh, Spring, spring loaded sticks thank you very much uh, along the back you have got the emergency brake and then you've got the return to home so a quick tap of that breaks it long a long hold makes it return to home uh, you've got the same gimbal wheel in exactly the same um, position so that's going to position uh, alter the uh, tilt of the camera this is where your mode is now you have normal sports and then uh, manual manual by default is not activated you have to go right into the settings and actually activate manual otherwise manual is just sports mode um, considering the top speed I'm quite happy to hold fire off manual for the time being over the right you've got another customizable button which you can uh, set in the settings um, you've got the uh, shutter button so you can take a picture or you can uh, take a uh, video and you've got the start stop and uh, cruise control I read about so uh, I'll be interested to uh, to test that so basically once you are going at a particular speed you can press that and it'll carry on flying at that speed even if you take your fingers off the sticks so that'll be a very interesting uh, function to try out nowhere to fit a phone of course uh, the last thing is this little lanyard uh, thing so you can put your little hook through and have it dangling around your neck right so the first time you have everything charged up you've obviously got to activate the aircraft so we've got the main <coughs> battery plugged in I've taken off the props because it is now pouring with rain outside looks like I'm not going to be getting my first flight today but I do want to go ahead and set everything up and I do want to at least see uh, things connected yeah as I said you have to have the battery connected to the uh, the goggles and then for setup or if you were going to have a friend watching alongside you have the little OTG cable and uh, that will go through to your phone as well so for now let's fire everything up first time so You've got the uh, usual click. You can hear that going. Let's turn on the old uh, fly app. And then turn on the drone itself. Again, <coughs> double click, the usual thing. So Okay, continues to sound like a little alien. So we've got here, we've got uh, every leg has got its uh, menacing little red 
I don't know if the lights are too bright to be honest, but um, yeah, you've basically got nice red LEDs along each of the legs. Uh, he's going to be hunting for GPS. He's not going to get much luck inside the studio today. Right, so like I said, the first time that you're activating, you've got to agree to the DJI terms. Um, if you haven't already got a DJI account, you need to go to DJI.com and just register your email address because you need to uh, bind that email account to to the drone itself. So once you finally get past the um, care refresh screen and you have bound your uh, email address or your email account, uh, next thing will be to update, update the firmware. As ever, you need to have good internet access, so do this inside rather than out in the field. Uh, it's got to download the package and then it will uh, upload to the remote or the goggles or the drone as required and it can take a good long time it's a fairly chunky little package and um, yeah it can easily take uh, five ten minutes to download and then another ten minutes or so to upload so i'll come back after that so turning it on ah, predator right there we go all the firmware updated uh, monumentally long uh, time to do that, over three quarters of an hour to update the firmware on the drone. There's also an update for the remote control itself as well. Hence, you need to have your full batteries before you start embarking on updating the firmware. Sadly, rain has very much stopped play for me today. There's no chance of me taking this outside for a first flight today, which is a real shame because I really hoped to be getting this up. So all I can do is carry on having a little bit of a play around with the, uh, with the app. The app looks very similar to um, the normal uh, Fly app that you would normally see on your phone. If you actually connect a phone, all you're actually gonna see is the live view of the camera. So as you turn the camera around, um, that's what you're gonna see on the phone. So the idea of obviously connecting a phone is that your spotter can um, keep an eye on what you're seeing as you're flying around as well but for now i'm not being able to um, actually work out how i can capture what's going on inside the goggles and i want to be able to show you um, the, the the way the app looks anyway look there you go that's everything you get with the combo the drone the goggles and the remote control battery for the goggles and a battery for the drone itself um, i'm going to have a little play now as i said with uh, the rest of these settings um, let me know your thoughts um, about the build quality and uh, the little predator sound each time you turn it on, which I do find a little bit funny. Uh, anyway, I'm hoping for much better weather tomorrow. So anyway, until then, uh, you stay safe and sane, have fun, happy flying.